tight shot from anybody else. Mm -hmm. when, when you make your remarks at that point, then it will become a tight shot for you. And the second camera will be moving around for wide shots and cut shots. Okay. Kind of I, I'm not concerned with that. I'm Take one. Second sticks, please. Second sticks, take one. It is a great honor and pleasure for me to be here again today. We recall re presenting you with the Best in America Eagle Award last year on the occasion of the bicentennial of the American Eagle as our national symbol. Today, I ask you again, as an honor and pleasure, to present the American Eagle of Invest in America to Marvin L. Stone, the editor of U.S. News World Report, and on the occasion of their great Golden Jubilee. Well, I can't think of a better custodian of the American Eagle than you and your magazine. For the past 50 years, U.S. News and World Report has set the highest standard for journalism in Washington, throughout America, and around the world. Each week, you record the contest between instant opinion and ultimate truth, and you do so with the integrity and intelligence set forth by your founder, David Lawrence. And now, let me read the inscription. Million, two million subscribers, and a lot of that news centers right here on this office. And I wonder if I could ask you to say a few words to our people who are gathering here in Washington this week to celebrate our Jubilee celebration. Well, I'd be happy to. Hello to all of you at U.S. News and World Report's 50th anniversary dinner. I want to say right at the top that I read your magazine every week and I have an admission to make. You know how some people turn to the sports section first in the newspaper. Well, I'm on the 60s, the Watergate scandal of the 1970s, and the economic uncertainty of the early 1980s. And let me add, I'm looking forward to some intense coverage of the economic revival of the 1980s. One thing that hasn't changed during the past 50 years is the purpose of U.S. News and World Report. Yours is a news and service magazine that both reports and interprets the news and provides up-to-date help for readers in planning their lives and their businesses. For your subscription, call the number flashing on your screen. Marvin, did you write this? <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't be there this evening and enjoy the celebration. I know I've been called an optimist, but I believe the world will have a few more things to celebrate in another 50 years. I genuinely do believe there will be more prosperity and more freedom around the globe, and I know U.S. News will be there to report it. Thank you, and now enjoy yourselves. How many girls? I haven't counted them at all. 25, 30 max, I guess. Then we'll go back to the substitutes. Say, Mr. Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, I was going to say, well, yesterday, one thing Howard suggested that seemed to me to make, to make sense even with this, the other one that the budget committee came out with was that not to try and reconcile the that and Democrat budget to have two budget resolutions, uh, Republican and the Senate, and uh, let the Democrats win with their majority, and then look where we've really got them. Oh, sure. sure. That wouldn't be a bad result. Hey, okay, look. I know it. Yes. How are you today? Nice to meet you. I'd like to meet Carol Wittenberg. Well, we met by way of closer television tonight. Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Nice to see you again. Hello there. Hello. Morgan Wood. Hello there. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Bob Gagan. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. I bet they want me to get out of here. Well, listen, I'm pleased to see you. 
see some of you here at least, and I understand you're here because you're up there, all graduates of uh, a local high school. Yeah, these two are mortgage graduates. This, this year is more than the 23rd year where every senior has got a college scholarship. 23 straight years. He didn't produce such good players. A lot of college coaches would be out of the ring. <laughs> Mr. President, I wonder if we could, if we could present you a book here with these two young men on the cover of it. It's kind of a dramatic story. Well, hey, we were granted to a, a champion president. Well, by golly. Thank you very much. And for the description. Thank you for this. Will, will it fit in that library there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, it will. Okay, well, I'm very pleased and proud. And, uh, you know, I have to tell you something, a little thing that happened uh, the other day the, when we were doing that TV thing. And uh, I, because of the names, I'm having, remember the name when I the do that little broadcast yeah, yeah, thing that yeah. I did. Well, I had those on the teleprompter so I wouldn't be able to miss the names. And I started in, and something went haywire with the teleprompter. I was watching it went too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how you, what a great job you did. I was doing it as fast as I could talk, and I finally just had to skip names and said, well, he, he. <laughs> I never, that's why I never gave the name. By that time, it was out of sight. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> really appreciated your time then and now, too, Mr. President. Very much so. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. President. Well, nice it's to it's see a great you. pleasure. It's it's certainly, a pleasure. congratulations to you. Yeah. Highly honored, Mr. President. Yeah. That's a great record. It's a real pleasure thank to meet you. you. My pleasure. Well, right. Oh, for heaven's sake, of course, yes. <laughs> Yes, my old coach was there. That's right. Yes. Right. Well, good to see you. And again, it's not bad to be number one for over two seconds. <laughs> God bless you, Mr. President. Yeah. Thank you. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. You know Carol Campbell, of course. Hi, Susan. Good to see you again. Good to see you. And this is Roger Long. Hello, Mr. President. Patty Dustin. Good to see you. Why don't we go in front of the fireplace? If you have them, that's good. They, they haven't been uh, beaten around too much. Thank you. 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 I wish I'd been able to see it before you went to the Lincoln Memorial. <laughs> because there was a thing that was told to me the first time I ever went there. And it turned out to be true. And that is that you go over to one side and look at that picture, you look at it in profile, you see the gentleness of the man. But if you go to the other side and look up, all you see is the strength. And it really is a yeah. as much as how we achieved that, I don't know, but, uh, but it, it is there. Yeah. I love having my face face. Listen, congratulations to you. You know, Mr. President, you and I have a small thing in common. In 1947, you were president of Screen Actors. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yes. I'm so proud of you. I remember very well. It's a very great picture, too. One of the first of the post World War II. Mm -hmm. Best days of the night. Like many times. Best years of the night. Best years. Yes, we do. That's one thing we do have. Yes, for a souvenir from here, so you won't forget us with the pin with, with the presidential seal. And you, I'd like a pair of cufflinks. I don't know why you use cufflinks. I use the president. I'm very proud of it. Well, all right. Yeah, it's good to see you again. We're having a nice friend tomorrow, for the, which Patty's going to be presenting. Oh, yeah. That's right, because tomorrow I'm on my yeah. way to California. I'm going to mention you in my speech tomorrow. I have to read the news. Don't be reporting that. Well, of course. We
we have something in common too. What's that? Uh, radio. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. I think I probably had the most unusual audition that was ever given on radio. I, a man had given me the best advice. I got out of school in 1932, and that was when the government was even advertising, don't go looking for work, there is none. So I, when I started hitchhiking around, because a man had told me, he said, there are going to be people that are going to want to hire young people in their industries. Radio was new. And finally, I told him, well, what I'd like to do is be a sports announcer. So he told me, he said, well, just start knocking on doors. And he said, don't ask for that. Just say you want to get a job in radio. You believe in radio. And then when, once you're inside, well, I tried that. I hitchhiked all the way from the Midwest. Finally, I was in this station in Davenport, Iowa. And the program director told me that he, well, they just auditioned 90,000 hired an announcer the day before. Mm -hmm. Well, this was the first time on the way out the door, I said, how the devil do you get to be a sports announcer if you can't get a job in a station? And left. And he caught up with me before I got in the elevator. And he said, what's this you said about being a sports announcer? And I said, well, that's what I'd like to. He took me in the studio, stood me in front of a mic, and he said, when that red light goes on, he says, you'll be in here alone. I'll be in another room, but I'll be listening. He says, you broadcast an imaginary game. <laughs> and I said, baseball, <laughs> football. Oh, football. Yes. football. And he walked back in, and about 15 minutes, I grabbed the mic, and he says, that's all. <laughs> he came back in, and he said, be here Saturday, you're doing the Iowa-Minnesota game. <laughs> and I became a sports announcer. Thanks. I want to tell you a couple things. Um, I'm one of your staunchest supporters. I just want to say that I think you're doing a wonderful job. Your budget, country, I feel like good things are coming. Oh, oh thank you. Good. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very I much. I wanted to tell you that. And also, number two, I just want to say a good word for voc rehab. I was meeting with people and I got a good vocational rehabilitation. I got a tour of the facility that they have in Columbia. It's wonderful. And they're the ones who got the lift on the van for me. And I, now I drive around and I do everything that I could ever want that's, to do. That's so great. That's well, what we, a good word for that. Well, and I, I know you've done an awful lot of good in this field. Believe me, we, we are interested in you. California when I was governor, we had we had quite a record there. Yes, sir. Yeah. One of the best. Same thing, and we're going to do the same thing here. I just think South Carolina's doing such a good job. Yeah. Of course, I'm proud of my own state. Yeah. You know? yeah. good. She, she is, is a fantastic emissary. Oh. <laughs> I can see that, yes. I well, it. been very and Thank you, and I'll wear this tomorrow. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Great pleasure. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Brett. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
more stabilized CDM structure. Let me just say that regard that if some of you want to go to the Russians bring up the matter of planes and submarines and so forth. We have never ignored those. Our whole approach in the start place was based on the idea that the most destabilized, the thing that is the most frightening and panicky to people, is the missile that somebody could just push a button and 20 minutes it's there. The, the others that are born by submarines and aircraft, we didn't mean to ignore them. But that is, this, you get to those after you do something about this, this destabilizing element. And the others we don't think have the same effect on people because at least they're carried in conventional weapon systems that people are familiar with and there's hours and even in the case of submarine days involved uh, in which normal combat can intercept these craft before they do what they're doing. But they weren't ignored. This was, our whole idea was, okay, get to those after we do something about reducing and I hope somebody <coughs> eliminating these, excuse me, these very frightening things that are there for someone to push a button and, and go there on their way and that's that. The, I welcome the letter that was sent by some of you urging me to take the lead toward achieving long-term stabilization, but I will tell you, I think I have taken the lead. And as I've just said, this is what we want and I'm totally dedicated to pursuing this all the way. We've, We've begun a careful examination of the points raised in the Senate House and Senate letters, and uh, our examination includes an interdepartmental review of how these recommendations can best be integrated into the overall arms control approach. But the letters, I must say, do recognize a representative of a bipartisan spirit that I think could lead us uh, to you know, common goals and objectives. The, central value of the, of the bipartisan commission's recommendation, uh, which Secretary Weinberger, as you know, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the entire National Security Council have all joined me in supporting, is its thoughtful integration of the relationship between programs of modernization, such as what we call the EMX, the Peacekeeper, and assuring us of a collective role in uh, effective deterrence <coughs> And what this will do also in helping us to promote arms control, and I hate to use that term, arms control, arms reduction, because I think that we need that, and we need a solid approach. We've gotten the Soviet Union to the table, and we've even gotten them to talk and propose themselves here in their reductions. And uh, we think this is an indication that they're but it's a response on their part to what they see as our determination to go forward with programs of this kind. So we provided an incentive for them to do it. I need your support also for the overall recommendations to include the development and production of the MX and its deployment as has been proposed by the Commission out there near Warren Air Force Base and the <coughs> development of the single head, the smaller missile that we're going to take, take the development is ready. You know, we couldn't get an order to produce it right now, but to proceed with that. But I think the main thing about the, about the commission's report is that if we start picking it apart and saying we're going like this or that or something else, I think the whole thing will be like pulling a keystone out of an arch. And I think that taken as a whole, it is a package. That, is, that merits all of our support. <coughs> Each of the four, past four administrations have made uh, proposals and um, they've become embroiled in partisan politics. And I think if we move close ranks and move forward on a program of this kind, that we can wind up with what I think we all want, and that is uh, not only the presence of a deterrent, peace in the world, but an approach that could lead, as I say, hopefully to eventually learn to this kind of weapon. To me, to look down the road and think that for all the time to come, the world is going to sit here with this kind of weapon pointed at each other, continuing to build up without someday having a disaster. I can't conceive of that. And again, I say, if not us, who, and if not now, when? 
if there's any better time to start working toward this. Now I'd like to ask General O'Malley and Secretary Dan. Good morning, Mr. President. Thank <laughs> you. 